Well, it's a little after nine. I'll call the International Falls Kuchin County Airport Commission regular meeting February 22nd to order. And uh, anybody for public comment? Can we just do? Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. And then screen. everybody that's on the screen, if you could identify yeah, yourselves, I, please. I, I couldn't connect by the normal, you know, WebEx or whatever connection. I'm not sure why I didn't have a URL number or something. Okay. Okay. Go Warren Commission, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you, Bob. Yeah, I'm not hearing anything from you guys. Chelsea, can we hear you? I think you did. Okay. Can you hear us? <laughs> Can you hear us now? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Let's see, we have Eric Peterson of Alliance, Destin Nygaard, Mike Johnson, Joe Stoffer, and Bob and Chelsea. Mayor Grove is online too. And Harley's there. Okay. Anyone else? Steve Trudeau is on for oh. Carl Sanderson. Okay, Steve, we just don't see you, I guess. And we'll move on to the uh, minutes of January 25th. I had a chance to read them. Move to approve. I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Got a second? Any discussion on it? If not, I'll call for the call the question. All those in favor, signify by the sign. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Uh, you have financial statements for February 22nd. Any questions, concerns? Anything on there? Nothing on the ordinary. This one. What was the Shannon's bill? Oh yes, that was a new, um, a new, a new furnace for the Weir's Bowl system in the S30 building. She failed, and we needed to put her in some Okay, that was in my report too. Good, we got it covered. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions on the financials? Move to approve the financials. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second to approve the financials. Any more discussion? There being none, all those in favor signify by the sign. Aye. 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 Motion carried. And due to time constraint, uh, we'll, we're going to move uh, Joe Stoffer, uh, attorney representation letter, up ahead of the engineer's report. So, Joe, uh, you have the floor. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Loud and clear, Joe. Okay, great. Uh, I'm having some technical problems with my headphones this morning for some reason, but it seems like it's working. Now. But anyways, thanks for having me. Thanks for moving me up in the uh, in the schedule here. Um, I've been talking with, emailing with Kyra, and getting things set up. Um, I'm not sure if anybody has any questions for me or want to know anything about my background, but uh, I've been here in Grand Rapids for a little over 20 years. I know Steve Shimon really well, and I think he's probably the connection that, that uh, put us together. Um, but other than that, I don't know if anybody has any questions or not. Any questions? Those Glorvigan folks down there. 
Uh oh, which ones? All of them? All of them. Brick particularly. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, there's quite a few of them, but that's yeah. it. All right. Well, yeah, Tyra knows how to get a hold of me. If anybody has questions, let me know. But I look forward to the opportunity. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank I you. know you got to get going, so thanks again. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. All right. You too. Okay. Right, bye. Bye. <clears throat> that we move into engineer's report out there. Well, good morning, Sean. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, John. Good morning, Casey. Well, we'll start off with uh, the terminal updates. Uh, we got uh, a collection of folks online here. Uh, Bob, maybe I'll turn it over to you. We'll start with the terminal and then move to the, the air side updates. Bob? Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Um, so, just an update we did send out uh, across out an email to the contractors uh, getting their agreement to come up and fix the roof leaks uh, in the spring and we've gotten several responses we did forward those yesterday um, we forwarded all of them collectively uh, to Kyra I'm not sure if Kyra if you sent them off to the commission or not yes I did. But I did, uh, you did yes I did so we have those um, you can see the responses uh, everyone has agreed to come up and uh, what we're seeing, everyone's loosely agreed to come up and um, fix their their portion uh, minus uh, this one. And uh, Steve, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Uh, no, you're you're correct. Everybody, you know, again verbally and now you know by email exchange are saying, "Yep, hey, let us know. We understand. We'll be up there to take care of our portions." A.W. Kettle is the remaining one that I've not had a chance to connect with yet. He has some questions, but I'll follow back up with Kettle. They would be removing and reinstalling the metal panel systems. But, you know, on the surface, everybody uh, does appear to be in agreement as we last verbally committed from them be up this spring, roughly early May, uh, to reconstruct monitors two and three. And also, I think we want to look into the ice damming and some dripping that was occurring there in the conference room at the same time. So that's kind of an update as to where we're at with the roof leaks. Any, any questions from the commission? I don't have any questions. I'm just glad that we finally got everybody together to work this out because it's been a problem from the get-go mm -hmm. you know a five-year-old building we shouldn't be having this kind of problem I would agree as, as much as we've had this problem do we need this in writing versus verbal I don't know if if I may they, go ahead uh, they, they are in writing that's what we we sent them out in emails so we had them respond uh, by email in writing okay thank you if I mean, yeah, I, I uh, took the opportunity, I, I reached out to a gentleman, uh, Mike, from MRJ Consultants, and uh, Mike Johnson, uh, out of the metro area, and Mike is a roof and building exterior solution guy. He does forensics inside of, inside of projects, which is where there's, where there's discussion, argument over, is it a design issue, is it a construction issue, etc. cetera. Um, Mike, are you, on the, are you on the call? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. Um, so at this point in time, would it be a good time to, to, to ask him to just give us a brief? Absolutely. Uh, ask Michael, could you please give us a, uh, just a brief uh, um, rundown of what you're proposing uh, includes to, to, to come to our projects and do a forensic study of, of, of the roof issues? Yeah, you know, and, and some of you I've worked with and I know um, been doing this a long time, 38 years, and uh, I recently went through a very similar uh, project with the Duluth Airport Commission in uh, 2019, 2020. And uh, they had a similar issue, new construction on their terminal had leakage issues and we were able to go out, all the parties, do some investigation together identify what was going on and then come up with uh, 
a reasonable solution without having this blow up and end up in any major court issues or anything. So it went very, very well. Um, I'm coming on board with limited knowledge on this project right now. I know nothing so far. And so it is good to hear that the contractors are coming to the table and stuff. And so the proposal I sent you guys this morning, uh, that was based on the assumption that I'm sure a lot of legwork has already been done, but that was just based on uh, me coming to the site, it, uh, reviewing all the conditions, reviewing the background documents, find out what's going and who the parties are. Um, but it sounds like he might be a little farther down the road than that. So that's a good thing. But uh, basically I'd be coming on board to represent the uh, airport commission to uh, act as your expert and uh, help resolve this issue. <clears throat> Did you have a chance to read that? Okay. <clears throat> well, what do you think, Board? What kind of fees are we looking at? He's got it right on the first page. So yeah, it's right on the first page. Thank you. He's got it. Is it the same? Yeah. You know, just on, on these deals, because there's so much uncertainty, and a lot of this might be able to be done out with a computer, I did copies of the building drawings, any shop drawings, find out whose system it is, is it a Firestone, is it uh, uh you know, all the different parties. I, I did hear mention that it was A.W. Kettle that installed the roof. And so I'm sure they would be willing to work close with me and provide me any information that they have because I have uh, worked with them for over 30 years up in that area. And I have actually helped them out on a few of these issues in the past. Uh, working for them, but uh, I call a spade a spade, and uh, it's just the way it is. Sometimes I work for the contractor, sometimes I work for the owners, but bottom line is we need to sort out the facts and get it fixed. I think it's a good idea to do. Uh, maybe this will hopefully be the once and for all done with it then, finally. I would tend to agree, you know, getting a third party involved in it to get, you know, give us a different opinion and hopefully get to the root of the problem. It's been happening so often already and everybody thought they had the answer each time and it's right. never been had yet, so I think, I think we should go ahead and do it. Yeah. This proposed fee for the initial is not to exceed 5000 is there a motion to move forward with that? I'll make the motion to move forward with uh, with uh, Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson's uh, forensic. Okay, Ricky second it. Okay. Any more discussion on it? There being none, call the question. All those in favor, signify by the sign. All right. All right. Those opposed. Motion carried. <coughs> we'll be in touch with you, Mike. Get you. Get you up here. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank Pretty you. Good. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Barb. Thank you. Thanks for getting on that. Yeah, no worries. A lot. It's my job. Thank you. All right. Any more from the engineers on that? No, I think just if there's you know information that we can provide, so they, you know, let us know. We have a lot of uh, you know background and a lot of things that have transpired that we can bring them up to speed. So let us know. You, you guys have a lot of information, so we'll rely on you to share that with him. But if you need us to step Absolutely. Yeah, right. This is uh, Steve at Carlos Anderson. I, I think, you know, I can certainly have a conversation with Mike uh, separate from now and make sure.
sure he understands the work scope requirements from each party. You know, Mike, just so you know, AW Kettle did not do the roof. They just did metal panels on the I wall flatting. I think Mike has left the meeting. Yeah. Oh, all right. But yeah, I can follow up to be sure he understands, you know, each of the that. contractors involved in what work scope they were required to do mm -hmm. and Great. responsible for. Perfect. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Who's next? Well, if there's <clears throat> nothing left for the terminal or updates on the terminal, I'll turn it over to Chelsea. <clears throat> she would have been here in person, but uh, the, the flight situation in Minneapolis is a little uh, uncertain. Yeah, what so, an excuse. <laughs> <really>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's not the Good morning. Good morning, Chelsea. Good morning. Um, I'll just kind of start at the top of the airside memo list uh, with phase two and phase three for the runway reconstruction. There's no significant updates right now, just punchless items that are going to be completed in the spring. Um, uh, jumping to runway 422, uh, we did send a memo, a justification memo to MnDOT uh, to hopefully get support from them for the bond funds. Uh, we estimate that there's approximately $1.2 million in bond funds remaining. Uh, I know, Casey, you uh, you chatted with Matt maybe a little bit more. Do you want to give just kind of an update on, on his, what he said? Yeah, we, um, so Matt Labins from MnDOT asked the question that, you know, would the legislature feel good about using bond funds on the crosswind runway if the FAA doesn't support spending money on that runway? Um, so Matt is an engineer within MnDOT Aeronautics. Uh, they have a planning group within MnDOT Aeronautics that just finished their state aviation system plan. So that, or that kind of study provides planning level guidance to MnDOT as to the state aviation system, so all of the airports in the state. One of their focus areas in that study was to develop a, um, I guess you call it a policy statement for how MnDOT is going to evaluate if and when they will provide funding for crosswind runways at airports throughout the state. So that um, policy has criteria for things to look at, you know, what's the wind coverage, is there an airport nearby that has a crosswind, do you already have one and you're maintaining that infrastructure versus are you asking for a new one and you don't have one, um, and then it provides a score, and if your overall score is above a certain level, um, that policy statement says that MnDOT should fund a crosswind in that location. Um, so international, ball, international Balls is far above the threshold required to receive state funding um, for the crosswind. So we provided that to Matt, um, and he is kind of circulating that within their office. Um, he, he didn't have any final answers yet at this time on, on their thoughts for that. Um, you know, at some point it might be beneficial. We could get our funding folks involved and set up a meeting with, with MnDOT. Um, and I'm not sure, it, it's a little bit unclear if he's doing this coordination purely within MnDOT Aeronautics or if he's reaching out to MMD for their <coughs> guidance. Um, but we'll try and, I think, continue to push um, for some answers. Um, but unfortunately, the feedback for right now from MnDOT is they don't know if that can be used yet on that. So, I don't know, anything else? Yeah, and maybe just some background because I know there's some new faces in the, in the room. Uh, this goes back to 2019, I think, is when this legislature was uh, put into the bonding bill. Um, the original request was uh, for runway, taxiway, and apron work uh, to support the non-federal share. Uh, so that's both uh, uh, the city and county airport commission share um, to uh, fund all the runway reconstruction work that, uh, that has happened and, and could happen. Uh, but it also funded MnDOT's share as well. Uh, what happened, uh, so there was a request for approximately $2 million. Um, the legislature didn't have an agreement and then they ended up going into a special session. So the project was completed before the bonding, half the project was completed before the bonding bill was signed. So you were unable to capture the funds for that portion of the project. That's why you have funds available um, to use on a future project. And I think. The memo and, and you know whether we use it on runway 422 or a future phase of um, phase four of the runway project runway 1331 
or perhaps an apron project. Um, you know, I think the what we're trying to do is make sure that that bond funds are available to you should you want to use it, um, because it has been allocated to the from the legislature to International Falls. Um, now we've got to make sure that the um, bonding language allows for it to MnDOT would process it. So I think that's maybe a little bit more of the background on it. Um, so there's money there. It's just we got to access it uh, with you know the justification that that Casey provided, um, and then. You know, perhaps uh, um, sharing the need uh, for that. I, I know Thor and I have had some conversations on 422. Uh, so 422 is the Crosswind Runway. Um, it serves smaller aircraft, um, a lot of international aircraft. Um, but right now, there really is no funding source to repair it. And then uh, FAA is saying, you know, they they won't support it due to the number of operations uh, that that use it. Um, Casey described that MnDOT says it's an important asset to the aeronautical system, but they're not going to give the, inter, uh, the airport funding to repair the runway. So right now it's kind of that gray area. So the bond funds seem to be well aligned if everything comes together. That's all we do is keep our fingers crossed. Right? That's the east-west runway out here. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So what do you think for next steps, Casey? Like how do you think this would play out? Yeah, I think um, you know I can envision you know it might be beneficial to set up a meeting with with Matt Labens at MinDOT and potentially other leadership from their office um, and our team and if needed we would pull in one of our, our funding specialists that that you know works with bond funds every day um, and and have a conversation and hopefully have more of a a concrete update by the next meeting, um, and then you know Thor or Kyra, if you want to be part of that that meeting or anybody else, uh, we could extend the invite as well. And the time constraints. Uh, so these are twenty nineteen funds, I think, late twenty nineteen, maybe twenty twenty funds. Uh, so they'd last for four years. Um, so we either need to use them by June thirtieth of twenty twenty four or get an extension. So that's another part of that funding meeting. To see if we can extend those funds um, to use those uh, either next year or the year after. The other thing that Matt Laban suggested was if we needed to amend the bond language to specifically state runway 422. I, I don't know that that's necessary. That's necessarily needed since the bond funds doesn't specify either runway. It just says for runway improvements um, at the airport. So it's already generic. What percentage, what percentage of the project would that be, would it cover? I think, you know, depending on how much money is available, we would it would be 100% of the project. Um, so I think that's the benefit for the airport is that there would be a 0% local share. You would use the money that was allocated by the legislature. We'd make the repairs to last, you know, hopefully another 20 years so you don't have to worry about, you know, FAA funding anything or MnDOT funding anything. You know, you're just going to solve this problem with the, the bond funds that you have. But. Um, we, we might have a, a little bit of an uphill battle to, to be able to access those funds. What is it that we feel is, needs to be done first, 422 or the south end of 1331? In my opinion, the um, you know the south end is still two to three years out, and FAA will fund uh, up to 95, 90% of it with MnDOT funding 5% of it. So there's a 5% local share uh, for that project. Uh, for um, runway 422, there is no funding scenario. So 100% of any repairs would be uh, borne by the airport commission. So from a value standpoint, 422 would be a higher priority to use with bond funds. Um, yeah, because I want to make sure we all understood. Mm -hmm. You know what's the best way to go here, and, that, and that's I would agree. We want to get 422 with those funds because we're used to the five percent or ten percent that we've got to kick in on the main runways. Yeah, and that being said, if it if F, uh, MnDOT or the the legislature or the MNB says that we can't use the funds for 422, um, you know, there's still our projects that I think we would advocate for, and whether it's phase four or design or or something that we can do to. At least make sure the funds are used because it has been allocated. Certainly, and if I may share with the group, runway three one one three is 
310 degrees on the, on the compass heading, right? So it's almost north. And so we did the studies decades ago, prevailing winds, they were dead on. They're all the runways northern the northern United States. They're all three one yeah, basically northwest. Yeah, so these having said that, and Sean, in case I haven't had many, have had many discussions regarding the use of the runway and, and funding, et cetera, and the studies clearly show 98% of the traffic is using 3113. Um, there, there's that discussion that Sean is sharing about the smaller runway for the smaller aircraft and crosswind. That is very really true. Um, but I appreciated your, your, your question about the three one end and, and the importance of that. And that's also quite important. Yeah, I just knew it was coming. Yeah, up. I just, that's an excellent memory. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's keep working on 422. All right. Is there anything else you want to talk about with 422? I think we got it. Okay. Um, so for the fuel farm relocation project, the design is underway for that. Uh, we just had a meeting with Thor this week, and I'm going over some more finalized items for that. Um, the construction is anticipated to start in June and to be funded with airport uh, CARES funds. It's the plan for that. Um, so I'm going to share my screen to go over some of the parking lot. <clears throat> can we go? Can we go back to the fuel farm? Yes, um, of course. I know my boss has mentioned that uh, we're probably looking at a, a newer, bigger um, glycol tank for our DS yeah. anti ice, and I'm pretty sure that that tank was going to go would go to the fuel farm area. So I think there needs to be a little coordination. That, uh, on that, yep. so that we make sure we have room for that bigger glycol tank down there. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So I did, uh, I did chat with Jake Haney about the sizing of what you guys have exact right now and what what they anticipate would be bigger. So I think we do have that already on the layout. Um, so it should be included in there. So it should be good. Okay. Great. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so moving on to the parking lot project. This project is um, going to be for the parking, the automobile parking lot outside of the terminal building. Um, so this has eligible and ineligible areas. So the, the plan is to mill and overlay the whole parking lot and then repair some of the curb and gutter out there that is kind of broken. Um, I'm assuming due to like plowing and just wear and tear. Uh, with that, we'll do new sign, uh, new signage and new parking markings. But one of the things that comes with this project is um, it has to be phased because you guys still want to have parking this summer. Um, so we're, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yes. We're thinking of over to the side will be phase one, um, and that will be you know, early June, kind of as early as we can, we can do. And it's, like each phase should only take about a week, so it shouldn't be like long once they get started. But um, so during that time, during the time, everyone can still park down by this terminal area. And then we'll, we uh, are thinking for September, so we'll do a two-phase project kind of split in time. So then in September, we'll make sure that everyone knows you have to park over in this area. And this will be done um, kind of mid-September uh, near this terminal parking lot, hopefully with a little less traffic. Um, you know, some is definitely hard to see. So it will be challenging, but it's going to be for about a week. Any discussion on that? Well, just to get her done. Get it done yeah. I think maybe one thing to add, um, you know, with that okay. parking, you know, we, we anticipate kind of a notification campaign prior. Um, you know, we'll put up some signs that says construction in this area. Um, you know, and then I think ultimately uh, in our contract we'll have. Uh, the ability for the contractor um, to move those vehicles. So I think we want to be very clear with whoever parks in that area that your vehicle may get moved. Should we need to work in that area if they're on a trip somewhere? Yeah. Um, Ricky will be busy. Ricky's yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, you know I think yeah. we just want to make sure we're 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 communicating that 
uh, that work is going to happen. We also recognize that. I mean, even looking at the parking lot today, you know, it's 75% full. So there's going to be some challenges on where people park. Sure. Um, so we'll, we'll continue to work through those. But I, I think a notification uh, campaign through Facebook and other things that we can do, signage and the terminal, um, and then ultimately being able to move some cars uh, around, um, you know, making sure that we've made that notice should that have to happen. And long-term parking will be eliminated too. So that will be plugging into the yeah. report. Yeah, so right. They'll be gone. Right. All right. Some points of the pavement de-icing applicator equipment. So we're working uh, with the FAA on justification for this runway de-icing spray equipment, um, and then also the storage equipment, the, the tanks, or the one tank for the pavement de-icing. Um, so it is expected that this will be federally eligible at 90% and then funded um, I'm in that at 5% with a 5% local share. We're working with McQueen and, and Wassa Tyler for the de icer equipment procurement. Um, and then this tank will be located next to the black hole tank uh, on the fuel farm plan. Uh, one thing with this is we did receive a um, quote uh, from McQueen and Tyler, or Wassa Tyler de icers for the equipment. Uh, we still do need approval from Tracy on the eligibility of everything, but um, they said, McQueen essentially said that these items are fluctuating, so we want to get this order in as soon as possible so that it doesn't, um, doesn't adjust. So once we get the approval from Tracy, we'll want to place the order, um, but it might be good to get approval today from the commission to order the equipment based off of this quote. It's uh, $412,467. And maybe one thing to add, and that would be contingent on FAA, um, FAA's review, um, you know, and we'll make any modifications that is requested by FAA for eligibility concerns. Well, I think it's an excellent opportunity to be able to get the match that we're getting for this equipment. Because this equipment's going to help us keep this airport <coughs> open. So, about the only way to do it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's gotten to that point. Right. Anybody want to make a motion on that? I'll make that motion. Go ahead with it. You go ahead with what uh, negotiate what needs to be done to keep it into the uh, FAA range to 90%. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. Motion and second to move forward with uh, acquiring the equipment. Uh, any more discussion mm -hmm. on it? There being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by the sign. Aye. 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 Motion carried. <clears throat> Go for it. That'd be a great addition. Awesome. Huge. All right, I think that uh, I'll pass it off to you, uh, Casey, for the building area planning study. Yeah, just real quick update on the building area planning study. Uh, the local FAA office kind of gave their final blessings on everything and are ready to approve it. It does have to circulate through kind of an FAA notification system to other lines of business, so it's working its way through that process right now. So hopefully within about 30 days, we should have all the signatures on the airport layout plan, and that project will be fully wrapped up. So. Um, that's that's all I have on that one, unless there's any questions. Does this layout plan include hangers? This it does. Plan? Yep. So it includes the hangers uh, towards the south, where yeah. the weather balloon facility used to be, um, and then some other minor changes. But that really is the big the big change that was added to add that area. Yep. You want to take the parking lot lighting, Chelsea? Yeah, so there's not really any space for that right now. I'm still just waiting on some warmer weather to get the lights fully installed. Thank you, Chelsea. And then moving on, uh, another project that we're working on. So we, we just kind of have a lot of uh, smaller type projects that we're working through here. Uh, this one is the TSA improvement project. Uh, and this is to install a uh, baggage screener that's provided by the Department of Homeland Security. Um, so there's some modifications that need to be made to the building uh, to allow this to 
uh, be installed. Um, so we're going to have staff on site uh, within the next month to kind of start that process. There will be a bidding document that will be created. It will be publicly bid, and a contractor will be on board to make those modifications. Once the modifications are made, the equipment gets uh, delivered uh, and installed by Department of Homeland Security. Uh, the equipment has been ordered, to the best of my knowledge, uh, from a company called Vertex. Uh, they're a direct um, consultant for the Department of Home Homeland Security that does this, this work. Uh, they were on site in 2021. Uh, they completed the site assessment. So with your uh, decision last, uh, last meeting, or it might have been in December to move forward, uh, with this project, they've kind of gotten that equipment in the queue to be delivered. So it's still it's still about six to six to nine months out, but uh, it's kind of in the process now that we're working through that. Okay. Now, part of the, you know the improvement so far is taking the walls out and doing some of that work. Uh, what's going to be our our cost on that? Uh, you know, I think the, the modifications are, are estimated to be in the, I think, right around $60,000, uh, and it is uh, funded with the infrastructure bill, so it would be 10% of that cost. Okay. Perfect. And then I found out from TSA, it sounds like we're getting the, the latest, greatest machine, too, which requires some additional training for those folks. I guess there's only one other machine in the state, but this is the newest one out, so we're getting the latest and greatest. Anyway. Yeah, and I think, you know, I'm sure Thor will touch on some of the changes in the airline fleets and it'll help, uh, you know, I think as more bags come through and expedite that process. All right. The uh, rest of the memo is uh, most mostly just updates on exactly the types of projects and where they fall, up, fall in and, and what funding sources are, are being used. Uh, to fund this, so again, it's quite a collection of uh, federal funding, either through your traditional FA funding sources, uh, the infrastructure bill, uh, COVID relief money, MnDOT funding, and then uh, MnDOT bond funds. So you're, you're kind of using all resources that you have available to you to, to fund uh, projects. Um, and then we also are tracking 2024 projects, which um, includes some construction removal around your weather station, um, building preparation, uh, site preparation for future hangars, uh, a potential transient, large transient hangar for larger aircraft uh, design, and then updating the zoning ordinance for the airport. So those are all in the future uh, 2024 projects and beyond. And the last thing I might want to touch on is the terminal electrical testing. Um, Thor staff worked with um, uh, uh, I guess a contractor to come in and do some testing to, to find out uh, the quality of the electrical supply. I'm a little bit speaking out of my element here. We had a good conversation with an electrical engineer from SEH uh, yesterday, so I think we're, we're getting smarter on the topic uh, uh, as we learn all these terms. Um, but the study basically showed there was some variability uh, in the system that you know isn't normal, uh, out of, maybe if I'm simplifying it, it's, it's not abnormal. Uh, I think there's always fluctuations in systems uh, and some of the more sensitive equipment uh, is sensitive to that fluctuation. Uh, so they made some recommendations to uh, some equipment uh, and perhaps some of the wiring that, uh, that could be done inside the uh, communications room and uh, throughout the terminal to help keep those, uh, those fluctuations from happening. Um, you know, there's essentially a surge. It's a giant surge protector, I think, is maybe how I, Overly yeah, yeah. As I, I kind of evaluated it. So I think with the information that uh, we obtained during the study, uh, we're going to request a quote uh, from a local electrician to, to make those modifications uh, and now be presented at your next meeting. I don't know if I captured that correctly. I think that's very well done. Absolutely. So more, more to follow on the, uh, the electrical uh, things. I think uh, maybe from a severity note, uh, Thor indicated that it hasn't been as many incidences or occurrences uh, for correct. some reason or another, but uh, we do want to make these modifications if, if we can. Yeah, it'd be nice not having a jet bridge kick out every time the power goes <laughs> Well, that concludes uh, the engineering and planning updates, unless there's any questions for us. Thank you. Thank you. Great updates. Fantastic.
Let's see, old business, we already took care of Mike Johnson, and new business took care of Joe Stauffer, so it's the TSA security upgrade requirement. Is everybody Thor? there? <laughs> we may need to take well, a break. And we, may need to, we may need to take a lunch break. We'll get there. Do we need an approval to, um, or a motion to approve this letter of intent from the attorney or anything like that? Or, you know, with his fees and all of that? I suppose we probably, probably would. would. Yeah, probably Just yeah. to be on We're the safe side, I'm thinking. We need a motion to do that. Don't right. Because it is in, in, you know, kind of a contract, so. Yeah, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> you want, who wants to make move on having an attorney on board? <laughs> I'll make that motion. I'll do that. Okay. okay. Uh, second? Let's see. <clears throat> motion and second to approve the letter of intent to bring on the. Joe Stauffer is our attorney. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor by the sign. Aye. 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 Thank you. Anything else, Kyra? <laughs> Thanks for keeping me in line. <laughs> Listen, she, she does it to me every day. I'm thankful thank she does. Yeah. What do we want to talk about, Thor? The new airplane? Or? Oh, yeah, this is this is interesting to say the least. This is uh, probably one of the most uh, challenging uh, undertakings that the airport's going to have. It's kind of interesting mm -hmm. just to start. Um, very complex puzzle, uh, moving parts. Two weeks ago, uh, two weeks ago I shared with the group uh, possibly uh, SkyWest intentions of uh, Servicing an airport with larger aircraft than we currently have. Currently, we have 50 seat aircraft, and uh, and they're they're looking at, at possibly uh, providing service us with, to us with aircraft up to 70, or, or the highest level could be 76 seats. Here, but herein lies the issue. TSA issues TSA laws in the United States is as follows: we are, we are we are currently at a classification four security airport. So what you see is what you get. Um, security area, side of badges for, for Brian and his staff, TSA, etc., armed security provided by, by Terry, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we're at a very sustainable level. We can, this is easy to do at this level. When you move into a classification three level, which would, which would happen if the airport wants to have an airline with 61 seats or more, Actually, it's the break point 61, 62 or more, let's go with that. That requires us to go to a classification three airport. <clears throat> Much easier said than done. When you go to a classification three airport, just throwing things out, security gates, uh, badge slash key, uh, keypad security gates, rotating codes on the gates, everyone inside the fence, background checks, um, uh, recurrent background checks, badges, side of badges. Um, our door and our facility uh, would require a very expensive security door, eye scanner, um, pad, cold weather testing. Um, let's just jump right into that. Uh, the effects on that, I am assuming, guessing, let's go with, with that terminology, would be quite detrimental because of the proximity of the cold testing building inside the airport perimeter fence at this time because of a lot of the folks that are driving the vehicles doing the testing are, uh, are, are foreign nationals background checks on them I'm not sure I'm not, and again I'm drinking through a fire hose as the rest of the group is learning right now um, it, it, but there's but the real the real complexities are behind what isn't what isn't happening Sky West is telling me on, on top, Sky West is telling me on from very high levels that their concern is that that the TSA is requiring all these airports across the United States to go to a classification three airport when Sky West is saying we're concerned about forcing these airports into this classification three because we don't know next year we may be successful, maybe in the fall. That we can, and now I, you, you know what I'm talking. That they may be successful, 
by reducing the seats in their current aircraft, their current 50 seat aircraft, to 30 seats, which would allow them to, to fly the airline on what we call 135 on demand scheduled charter. Okay? The motivation for that is then the crew requirements are less. Still safe, totally cool, 100% end user safe. It, it allows them to, to hire people with less time. That also allows them, um, so when there's delays and weather delays and maintenance delays, it allows them to have a little more flexibility on refunds, etc. You know, the passenger end result, etc. That's just that's just the cold hard truth. <clears throat> the issue is the issues are as follows. TSA is telling us they're looking at a July one target. Sky West is not telling us, well, maybe we'll be ready by July one, but we don't know if we're going to be ready by July one. We'll probably be still sending you CRJ two hundred aircraft. 50 seats. When I pressed TSA asking them, how did you come up with this magical number of 61, no one had an answer. It's an old carryover from 911. So 911, they built the TSA, they threw up these numbers, they had the brain trust, da 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 da, etc. Et et that sounds like a good point because at that time in the industry, there wasn't a lot of jets servicing aircraft, jets servicing airports of our size, they were all turboprops much smaller aircraft, more frequency of flights, et cetera, et cetera. So it's an adequated law. The problem is that, that if, if, if SkyWest, and they're, and they're with everyone else, if the largest aircraft that they are going to ever offer us is 76 seats, or less obviously, then we're doing this as an industry across the United States, and most importantly, direct effect of this operation, that we're changing these rules, these costs, unfunded mandates, mind you, um, for what we do the math, whatever it's that 16 seats or 15 seats, whatever that number is, right? So logically, logically, and I'm not now we're, now we're now we're speaking logically, it is totally insane. Okay, it literally is. If a bad guy wants to get inside this airport, inside this fence, he's gonna get in, right? Um, it, 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 you know, 10 feet high, 4 foot high, whatever, whatever. If somebody wants to cause harm to the aircraft people on board the airplane, they're going to do that. But of course, that's a logical discussion. That is not a TSA discussion. Um, the, 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 uh, as, as this thing unfolds, um, I'm asking them, is it funded? No, we don't have funds for it. Okay. What is it going to cost? Well, well, we don't know. Okay. I'm just taking this again on what I'm envisioning the cost and the change to the airport. I have no idea what engineer designed security gates are or doors, and there will be door changes inside of this building also, access points. I have no idea our door at the FBO. I have no idea the cost of gates at the COVID testing area, uh, of Crescent Drive. Is there, is there a way we can build fencing? Is there a way we can do roadways, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to do all of this with no guarantees? I repeat, with no guarantees that they're going to either provide us with an aircraft greater than 61 seats, and if and when they do, how long that aircraft will be servicing smaller airports. Um, I'll tell you what I'm doing with a little bureaucracy, and, and I think I shared this with Terry. And, and I asked Terry to come here today, and, and I'll, 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 I'll continue with, with, with if I may. Um, so, one of the requirements to do this is the airport security secu uh, assistant coordinator director, because that person is going to be doing the photo work and the badging and the fingerprinting, cannot be an employee of a contractor such as we are. They have to be a direct employee of the airport. Okay, interesting. I asked, okay, um, I think, I, I, think I, I have a person in mind, but I said now we're talking about space availability. I asked the question, how much space? Well, you know, space would be great. I asked questions, um, the equipment, is the equipment fun? No, it's not. 
Um, back to the space, back to the office space discussion. I said, well, Terry works very closely with us as 3D coordinators now. He works very closely with TSA. He's a retired police officer. We give him the ultimate empowerment. We give him a gun and a badge as he should use on the airport to his authority, to his discretion. Can we put him, can we intermix him with TSA folks? Oh, no, you can't do that. <laughs> I said, I said, excuse me? Well, he can't, yeah, he can't see that, he can't see that information. And I said, really? So just so we're clear, then I asked the question again. I said, just so I'm clear. We give the gentleman a gun and a badge, okay, the ultimate power on the airport to do his job. He has, he has what we call the Jesus key right now. He can go anywhere in the airport, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, any door, as he should, he can pay on it. But we're not going to allow him. That's just what we're doing. So, um, I've asked Terry to come here today, and we've, we've discussed it. Um, frankly, the group, we are between a rock and a hard place. I have a meeting on, I want to say Tuesday, uh, numerous meetings, but let's go Tuesday, 9 o'clock, whatever, a number, uh, with the airports in Minnesota be, being affected by this, with the TSA, uh, discussing these, these proposed changes. A little bit of good news. Yesterday, I had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Congressman Pete Stauber on an issue that was not airport related, but I took the opportunity to talk to him about it. And he is clearly on board. He's on the good team. Explained the situation, uh, I reached out to Hibbing. Um, Hibbing, has, Hibbing has contacted Stauber's office also um, of these requirements that literally um, it's it's really really difficult to to, to, to conceive how we're um, don't get me wrong we can do it you can throw enough money at it you can do it no question but then you're going to be spending these monies totally change the dynamic of the airport complete utter change and then I'm looking to the future and going like okay so do we get you know they're looking at July one. Do we get this program up and running by September? I mean, I'm just, I'm just, you know, predicting. And if we get it running by September, are they going to change your aircraft? And I don't, and I don't have an answer. And frankly, frankly, TSA and clarification, SkyWest does does not have an answer on it. But I have uh, taken the privilege to ask Terry to come to the meeting and we've had some discussions about this, that one way or the other, whatever decisions made here today, we need to hire a person who works directly for the airport to do this work by legal definition. And um, Terry uh, has, has, has shown an interest in it. Um, I think he's a, he's a perfect he's a he's a perfect candidate for the job for a person perfect person for the job. Um, we've discussed some some hourly rates. We've discussed some contractual rates. Obviously, if the commission wants to go this direction, um, I would recommend that you you would start Terry on an hourly on an hourly basis, on, on an hourly charge basis to to get these to get the the program rolling. Um, It's February, right? We're at the end of February, coming up on March. Um, frankly, I, I would, I would uh, I'll lay my cards on the table. I would, I would, I would recommend you hire him today. Or uh, I would not wait a month, in my opinion. I don't know. I get a sense that starting Tuesday, my sense tells me they're going to turn the burners on this at that point. Or, or do you want to have a special meeting before the next? If I may. Please, I'm sorry. So the airport does not have any employees. 
I'm not an employee of our airport. We have no em employees. And I don't know how the joint powers agreement is read, mm -hmm. so we may need legal representation to review that joint powers because we don't, like I said, we don't have any employees. Everything is contracted. Mm -hmm. So that would be my concern with, with that, so. Once again, the brains of the operation. Yeah. <laughs> but I still think it's <clears throat> premature okay. to bring Terry on okay. to even think about it. Okay. Because everything that I've heard of with my boss yes. and moving up to our SkyWest people, excellent. He said, don't worry about it. Talking to our TSA people, don't worry about it. It's, it's an option. And they're telling us it's an option to move to that level. And SkyWest has been talking about getting rid of the CRJ 200 for five years. Do you, you know, so, I'm sorry. You know, I know they're in a crunch now because all their pilots have moved up to the big airlines. Yes. So they have a shortage of pilots. That's why they're in that 30 seat mode. Mm -hmm. Taking 20 seats out of the CRJ allows them to use a thousand hour pilot versus a 1500 hour pilot. Yes. Yeah. I, I just think it's real premature right okay. now because I don't see anything really going to happen. You know, yeah, like I, I read the email and that you know, guy saying 1 July. Um, like There's no way. Our that, boss, that, that, our, that our boss is at SkyWest says, it ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. you know. So just, you know, just be prepared? And then I, I would say we need to be thinking about it, and mm -hmm. especially when there's no funding for it, you know, and we're not the only airport. I would assume Hibbing, Hibbing Bemidji, Bemidji, Brainerd, Brainerd yep. International you know, Falls. You know, basically the four yep. EAS right. exactly. airports in Minnesota. We're right like, there. And, and to me, it's it's not logical. It's not logical at There's all. There's no logic to it at all. It's, it's That's insane. because you're moving from a 50 seat to a 61. Well, actually, you know, if we get the, the yeah. 700, it's a 60 something. If right. we get the 900, you're up to the 70. Yeah. yeah. And for all those airports, it, it, we're going to need way more equipment. We're going to need we're going to need belt loaders. We're going to need pushback probably tugs, uh, you know, air starts, uh, you know, mm -hmm. tons of equipment that each airport is going to have to get to make that work. Good question. <clears throat> Would it be an advantage to us to maybe see what it costs to get? the gates that they're talking about, the locks that they're talking about, that kind of thing, so we have an idea that we can battle back with them that where this money going to come from. We don't have no clue what it would be to to make it secure at the secure level that they want it at. I, I think that's a great point, and I think, yeah. too, that I, and I think the cost, I think the physical cost of those gates is don't get me wrong, I, I think they're going to be really expensive. I do too, that's but, why I said I think right. you should get the I, estimate. I think that's probably a, a, a small piece of that finance, of the money, right, to, to run it. Right. Right. That's a good idea, but, yeah. And, and I can have that security part of it, and then also mm -hmm. whatever we see that, that is going to have to happen, but not be funded. Correct. Yeah. It We're would be prudent to do that, to, to, to at least have a, a, idea. A, a, yeah. a pretty good estimate of really what fun. all that's going to cost so you can throw that and, back at yeah, us. If you're yeah, going to throw yeah. this at us, yeah. it's going to cost us a million dollars to bring doors, the airport up to it. Yeah. Ter you know, term terminal doors changes. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. It's, it's very complex. But I, but I think we need to, I, I would think we want to communicate with the other three airports. We are. I so am. that we're yeah. all together yeah. on yeah. this with Absolutely. with the uh, Pete Stauber, mm -hmm. you know, and use him. Absolutely. You know, and have him push that up because mm -hmm. to me it's asinine. And, it's and if you listen dirty. to the TSA guys, they're saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. And if I may, what I'll do is after Tuesday's meeting, um, if anything significant comes out, if big TSA, quote unquote, if they dig their heels in, then I'll, 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 I'll contact the group and I'll let you know, you know, the discussion. But what's, what's deeply frustrating is in this, in we're experiencing it right now with us, with our discussion is they won't give us a date and time. They're just saying, well, let me look for July 1. And I'm looking, okay, give it to us in writing. They won't do that. Um, SkyWest, the letter of intent uh, of, of when, this, when they're switching over, that's how that discussion got into, like, you know, you know, you know 
don't do this weight, you know, we're concerned to be smarter for it, so. They um, can't even keep a set set schedule. No. They change the schedule on April without even putting it out to anybody, because when I booked a ticket to work, go on vacation, it says I'm coming back at 8 o'clock in the morning on the, on the 21st of April, and then a month after I make the reservation, now it says, well, the morning flight's gone away. Well, we, we never even knew we were getting morning flight, so, you know. <laughs> no, we didn't. So they changed my ticket back to the way it, our schedule now, and it's yeah. like, they and don't know what they're doing. They don't, and what's, and what's interesting is, and, and to build on that frustration, one thing that, that, that I was uh, told and reminded of uh, from the folks at, on the DOT level, but number three in, 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 at DC, is he said, yeah, everyone, everyone's frustrated, uh, uh, this is the scary part, everyone's frustrated with the regional carriers, but he said, I quote, you guys, Sky West is by far the best, and I'm, and I'm going like, oh, that's great, <laughs> right? You know, it, it's, it's just they, the they truth. make this big deal about going from 50 to, to 62. Right. Yet, you know, this week we had 176 passengers that we put out and um, brought back country. in on a Sun Country flight. And that's exactly, and, that, and I brought that, that's one of my notes. Thank you for reminding me, that's excellent. 737, 184 passenger capability, how many went out? 160. 176. 176. So when I asked that question to TSA, I said, well, just so we're clear again, so you understand. So they, I said to them, so you understand what we have here. I said, you are aware that we have Sun Country, you know, junkets. We have, you know, uh, up to up to 184 seats. I said, yes, we're aware of that. I said, so please explain to me if we can turn a 184 seat aircraft and we can do it on a regular basis. You know, what, what's this, what's this big 61 number again? They don't have an answer. It's crickets in the room. Right. It's a bureaucracy driven nightmare. It's unbelievable. And I just wanted to bring it to the group today just to be sure because it, it's... Well, we need to be aware of it. Yeah, it's a moving now, target, but, uh, for sure. But I think, I think Walt has a good idea that yeah. maybe it'd be prudent for us to, you know, have well, SCH and I wonder go out and research and, and, and give us an estimate of what it's going to cost. We could try to contact them and see if they could do the same thing so that with, with three airports going in with the same thing, with the right. estimate of well, who's going to finance this. Mm -hmm. you know, right. We can't do it. And, 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 and our airport is, is, is in a very positive way, unique in the sense is that we have customs, of course. And that, of course, would change that whole dynamic, too. Sure. So I, I shared with them also, because they had, a, they had a large fluorescent red line over covering, you know, proposing the upper security area on the ramp. And I said, well, I said, no, put the brakes on here, guys, this whole line. So we have, you know, the, the whole terminal isn't yours. I said, you know, Basically, basically a quarter on the northwest end. I said that's customs. I said we park aircraft right there. I said we're not going to put that ultra security area there. We have to have people in or not. So that was a that was a discussion itself. But I'm, I'm getting too much into detail. But uh, I just wanted to share with the group that's that's where we're at. Right. Well, it's a good discussion now. I mean, something's going to happen. One oh, something's going to break. Yeah. It has to. It's either going to go to the thirty seat or. Yep. You know. Yep. And either and, way, and the CRG, the two hundreds. Our, our maintenance nightmare. This is an example on, on a weekend. He had one come in and his, his you know, rear thruster went out, so they brought the mechanic up from Bemidji. Mm -hmm. He got it fixed. Mm -hmm. The plane got out just as the next plane come in. That, and that plane came in with the same exact problem with the thruster. Had to they had to call the the hey, can you get a hold of your guy and tell him to turn around? He was a half an hour down the road, mm -hmm. and they had to turn around, come back, and fix that plane. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how many times is that? You know. Constant. Now, last winter, we had that plane parked out here for a month. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're just getting to be a maintenance nightmare for them. They've wanted to get rid of them for the last five years. And that goes it's getting closer to the point where I actually believe that they probably are going right. to pull the pin and put them in the boneyard. And We'll have either seven or nine hundred up here, but um, hopefully not the Embraer. But. What, would, what would be nice? What would be nice on the TSA's level is that so much for them, and and, and they're telling me on, on the side channels, you know, they're telling me, you know, we, um, I'm sure it'll work. Um, <clears throat> they're telling me that they need to staff up, you know, nationally for this uh, for these changes too, right? Like, oh my goodness, same etc. Okay, it's great. Um, so much can be accomplished, and you would not be impeding on security at all by coming up with a number, a 100, 125, 150, you know, have a good number, right? Do the study, 
make sure the study is, you know, we're not we're not cutting corners on security, we're not, you know, not causing any issues out there, but come up with a logical number. Yeah. yeah. And make sure make sure that that you know the nine the seven hundred the CRD seven hundred the CRD nine hundred and the Ambera one seventy five. That's the vast majority. That's going to cover the United States of America right. for all carriers. So if that is true, and it is true, well then get that number to cover these babies without right. changing security rights. Right. Yeah. I mean that would be the logical thing to do because right. it doesn't make sense right. to tighten up this airport for an extra fifteen to twenty seats. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to talk about at least the you know. The, you that or when the EAS contracts come up, you go with that other airline that's going to bring the 20-seater in here six times a day or something. <laughs> no, but it's no restaurant. I mean, I mean that would be an option. That is an, that's an absolute option, absolutely. You know, I yeah. mean, we, we talked about it the last contract. You know, was, do absolutely. we want the 50-seater or do we want to have five flights with the, that 20-seater? So. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, more to come, right? Yeah, yeah, more to come. Any questions on that subject for the team, for the group? And I'm on board, so Got whatever. It. Yep. Okay. So I mean, whatever. I mean, yes. I mean, if they force us to do it, Terry, I mean, right. we'll be in contact, right? Right. So, right. And I know we know where you live. And uh, we do. And, we, and I'm we, on the same plane, no pun, as you guys. It's like, right? There's this this ghost number and a ghost date and right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I think. I think my favorite thing though is he can have the gun and the badge, but he can't be inside of the room. Right. I think that is I think that is really cool. And okay. I have the, I'm just like and wow. I can go into TSA. Yeah. And he has the key. I mean it's in our mind. I'm done with that. I'm trying to I know. I want logic in this, right? There is no logic. Well, well that's, is that gonna change the cleaning people? Because they, oh, they, they go everywhere he goes. Absolutely, right. Exactly. Right. Yeah, I and, 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 I'll have to have one of my guys behind them at all times or something. Yeah. And that's an example. And they do that people. when there's nobody here. Right. right. All, all, all of our staff, all, all, you know, all of our people, all, everyone, you know, literally everyone. Can't have this meeting here either. Yeah. <laughs> have to have that. We'll make sure we get that done. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just. Yeah. Or you just get the badge. Oh, that's yeah. that's Ricky. Right. Right. That's fine. This yeah. is gonna get fun. Yeah. <laughs> See what you're getting into. Oh, so, <laughs> welcome aboard, gentlemen. Yeah. All right. You might as well move into your manager's report. Yeah, just slide right in. <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay. We covered uh, we, we, we we covered the parking lot discussion, which which was great. Um, two things. Uh, we took possession of the new fire truck uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, working with Rosenbar uh, Fire Truck to to set up the training team to come up to coordinate with our team. Um, and that would be our team, and including Adam Minas, the fire chief uh, at Nurse Falls, of course. Um, at this point in time, Kyra has the invoice. I don't know what the time is on your. It's oh. in the bills today. Oh, thank you very much. I knew that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, so the, the truck's in possession, as I think I shared at the last meeting, I don't recall. I've been talking with Adam, uh, options for the group. Um, uh, I've been talking about that about possibly uh, City of Falls may be interested in that truck. Um, he thought at first he may have storage for it in the South International Falls facility, uh, but it's a little bit too tight. Obviously, the truck cannot be stored outside. Uh, so if Adam, uh, Adam in the city is not interested in using that truck to augment that uh, for foam for application, um, then what, what we'll do or recommend doing is that we will um, we, we will winterize the truck and we will park the truck outside with a professional doing the winterization uh, um, emergency apparatus systems. And then uh, next step is I would suggest that uh, we look, it, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're almost valueless, sounds strange, they're, 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 the value with them in one piece, fascinating is isn't as high at this point in time. It seems as if they're going to a to to a person who's who's peacefully out the, the engine, the transmissions, etc., pumps and what have you. Um, there's many out there. A lot of people are transitioning at this time. But, but that's some options to look at to see if there's some other fire companies in the United States. You know, uh, but I don't believe, and I don't have an exact number. I don't the, the, the truck finance. You know, it doesn't that does not have a significant amount of value, which is hard to believe, but true. I don't want to see it sitting outside. No. We've got county guys here. What is there an option of uh, the uh, 
old armory. And they got room they could park it in there. There you go. Until we get mm -hmm. a buyer for it. Right. I mean, I, I would check into mm -hmm. that. So right. it doesn't have the to only, sit outside. The only part that's heated in there is on uh, the sheriff's. Uh, the sheriff's had one room for evidence room. That's in the bolting. In the bolting. That big machine, too, yeah. Or so there's no space, space over there? Well, there there could be space on the other side, but there's no heat. There's no heat in it. Ten feet. Ten feet? Ten feet. Ten feet. How wide? Ten feet. Probably average size width. How yeah. long? How long? Twenty seven and a half. Twenty. Look, I'll, I'll look. Let me look. That's the wrong number. Yeah. I don't want to give you the wrong number. But I'd like to find somewhere where we would keep it inside. Sure. It. Sure. At the very, very least, um I talked to a lot of folks in the industry and they said do not attempt to winterize that vehicle on your own. There's too many pockets, there's too many pumps, there's too many houses, there's too many places to break stuff. Okay. And I don't think that's very high rec high rec. Sure. You're talking about getting rid of this summer yet. Correct. Mm -hmm. Our plan at this point is sequentially, I'm waiting for Rosenbauer. We'll get that we'll get that date lined up. We will take our existing truck, we'll take two, three, four days, whatever it's gonna take. We'll we'll get our new truck up online running, we'll do the training, we'll make sure we're a thousand percent of the new truck. Absolutely no questions asked. Everyone's going to be everyone's going to be at 100. percent We'll make sure we double check the math, and then we will at that point switch over. And uh, right now we're just taking up storage space in the art building, but we're tight, but it's working right now. So, okay. Thank you. Um, let's see. Last but not least, um, here it is. As of two weeks ago, let's go with that. Three, two weeks ago, unfortunately, uh, on our HT plow truck, uh, one of our operators was not his fault. Um, it was an underground vault, and uh, we severely bent uh, the plow on the HT plow on the HT plow truck. Overly simplifies 27 feet, 20, 27 feet in width, 24 feet of cutting edge, etc., etc. Um, uh, did the privilege, went to McLean Equipment, got pricing on a new one. I have not talked to uh, Car, I have not, I have not talked to Shereen yet on the insurance coverage on the plow portion. Thank you. Anyway, um, so uh, one way we're running the plow right now, um, having some uh, folks that are relatively, uh, relatively knowledgeable on plows and snow equipment. Um, you can't bend it back. You can't. It's it's um, for the sake of the conversation, the last set of ribs. So it's about the impact point was on the very very end, and it bent the plow in from the end about eight feet in, right in a real bad structural area. And the cost to fix it, you, it'll never it'll never come back straight. You'd have to change the poly two on the back of the plow. And by the time you did the labor and the effort and the maintenance and try to keep it straight, it will not stay straight. My experience tells me, and um, so um, I have a quote from McLean Equipment for forty-four thousand four five nine. Again, I have not, as of yet, talked to the insurance. I'm assuming I already have the answer for this. That obviously, this is not, this is would not be fundable on on any way, shape, or form, Sean. Min dot fa. Yeah, I, I don't think so. Yeah, um, within the ten years, so COVID funds, any of that. Uh, I would imagine you could use CARES funds. Okay. Could yeah. you potentially use like the ARPA or CRISA under a maintenance? CRISA's category? used up. We've used all of that, okay. but maybe ARPA. That might be better to use that versus your CARES. Yeah. Because we have kind of CARES already allotted for, I believe. So, mm -hmm. we, yeah, we could potentially use the ARPA funds. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I would think insurance can cover some. I would certainly think so. If not all. I would think, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why we have insurance, right? And, yeah, and in fact, in fact, this morning, that was one of our, one of our email discussions was uh, Shreen looking for the numbers on the new fire truck. Yes. Which I will get to today. Well, keep us updated on whether insurance pays for it. Right. Do you need a new plow now, though? No. It'll make it'll make the season, but we're leaving. It's you know we're yeah. we're, we're we're leaving cut where we don't okay. 
need it. We should not be hit by an applicator, correct. But we'll definitively need it yeah, by the vote. So we but, do have time so far as but having to have a motion to yeah. move I would, to the new one or where But if I may, I think it goes back to the discussion of material availability. Well no, over here. Okay, uh, no, Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea on? I'm here. Yeah. Um, thinking out loud on this plow, on this quote from McQueen for the new plow for the HT truck. You were not in that loop, but I'm but I'm thinking about supply chain and thinking about increased cost on raw materials. It would probably be it would probably be prudent to order it now. That's what I'm thinking too. Absolutely. As far as availability, that's yep. Yeah. Good. It's always a big thing right now. I mean, mm -hmm. it would take six months to get here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And hopefully within that six months we know insurance, insurance is going to pay and whether well, we'll yeah, I'll have that in the, the week probably. I would make yeah. the motion that we order it now so we have it by fall. Okay. And a motion and a second. second. Motion and a second. Purchase the plow. Any more discussion? All those in favor signify by the sign. Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Got it right. Good. Um, I don't believe there's anything else this time. I wanted to say uh, welcome aboard uh, Destry and <laughs> Ricky. Um, I don't know, have, have they been introduced to the SEH team? I don't know if this, uh, um, Chelsea is with SEH Engineering with the folks on the back bench. Um, You'll uh, see these folks at every meeting. Yep. Or up there. So this is uh, Ricky Roach and Destry Hell. Oh, yeah. And our newest members, we're glad they're on board. They're, they're, they're good people, so history with them. Wonderful county commissioners represent them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We'll talk offline about Ricky. Sorry, <laughs> 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 Nori Love. Public. <laughs> Not for public consumption. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, uh, for the great support and great work. Um, appreciate you listening to the events about the Deer Lawn and TSC. And we'll just, as always, we'll do our best and wait it. Shoulder the stone and just keep pushing. All we can do. All right. Thank you. What do you have, Kyra? Not much. I'm uh, claiming some of the packets. They were up again last month over last year, which is good to see. Um, that is about all I have, other than just a reminder I will be out on medical leave starting pretty much tomorrow mm -hmm. for my estimated date of return is April 7th, so um, not before then. Hopefully, maybe. We'll see. So who's going to who's going to take your place next month? Well, I'm going to have to do a little bit of work from home, I'm guessing, and Betty's going to help, so okay. she'll be helping with the bills and that sort of thing or anything in between. So. Okay. Yeah, we're going to miss you. I don't know going to miss you. I don't think I, I, don't think I train Betty. I'll tell you. <laughs> I like Betty. <laughs> All right. Any other business? Anyone have anything else? Otherwise, we'll stand adjourned. The next meeting. Uh, next meeting. Then. March what? What works for SCH? Yeah. <laughs> We're pretty flexible. Over here. The last Wednesday would be the 29th. Twenty nine, is that what I hear? At work for SH? Anyone else? Twenty nine. Uh, At what time? I don't think they dish there. Twenty nine? No, I'm, I should be good. Okay. Wednesday usually the third. Huh? Is there a Wednesday? Yeah. Uh, the last the last Wednesday it usually is. Okay, nice one. Oh, you good? Twenty nine? Uh -huh. At what time? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock? Because mm -hmm. Harvey was asking me why we went to 9 o'clock today, and I said, I don't know. I thought maybe 9 is nice, but I'll go 8. It doesn't matter. Either way, I don't care. <laughs> huh? What's yeah. the wishes? 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Something was it 9 because I had a. Yeah. Something going on. Yeah. 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 Yeah.